What's good everybody? Welcome back to Cadillac Cartoons and today I'm going to show you how to use colored pencils. Now if you've been on my channel for a while you know that I use colored pencils for my illustrations but I never really talked about colored pencils in general because as a mixed media artist I use markers but I like to use colored pencils on top of that because I treat colored pencils as like a touch up tool in case my marker blending doesn't work I try to use colored pencils to kind of like fix it in case it doesn't work out. But I don't really make that many colored pencil illustrations like that but I still know how to use them so today I'm gonna to show you how to use colored pencils how to go about them how to blend them and all that stuff so before I tell you how the video is gonna go down I'm gonna show you guys what supplies you're gonna need for this video so paper wise you're gonna need Canson mixed media paper mixed media paper does have some texture to it which makes it easy for you to apply some colored pencil because it's more of a dry media you could also use Bristol board. It's a little bit smoother than mixed media paper, but you can still apply colored pencils to it and you can still get a good blend out of them. Also, if you have a sketchbook that you kind of carry with you, sketchbook paper could also work because the paper in like a regular sketchbook, depending on what brand it is, it's kind of like an in-between texture between mixed media paper and Bristol board. But one of the three paper types could definitely help you out. And of course, you're going to need colored pencils. But just an FYI, the colored pencils that I'm using are wax-based. And I'll talk more about what wax based colored pencils are later on in the video but if you are concerned about the brands that I'm using I'm using both Prismacolor and Arteza colored pencils both brands have wax based colored pencils and the Prismacolor ones are a little bit more buttery than the Arteza ones but both brands pretty much do the same things but you can get either or and it'll still help you blend in this video but if you like adding highlights to your colored pencil illustrations, then I would also use a gel pen. So that's it on the supplies, and now I'm going to tell you how the video is going to go down. Like I just mentioned, I'm going to first talk about the differences between graphite and wax-based colored pencils. And I haven't really had any experience with oil-based colored pencils, if you guys know what that is. But I have done some research prior to making this video, so I will be able to explain a few things about oil-based colored pencils and be able to compare them with what I'm explaining to you today. And and then next I'll show you guys how to properly color with your colored pencils so you won't get like a very streaky kind of line when you color with it. And then I'll show you guys how to build up on layers by adding pressure to your pencil. And that's another thing. I won't necessarily talk about pressure in like a certain part of the video. I'll talk about pressure like throughout the rest of the video because it's a very important thing to remember when you're using colored pencils. And pretty much any pencil basically, whether it's graphite or colored pencil, pressure is kind of important when you're either coloring or drawing. Then I'm going to show you two ways to blend your colored pencils. One way is going from very saturated to very light in different variants of pressure. The other way is by going back and forth between light and dark tones while also building up on layers so you can get a clean, vibrant gradient out of your colored pencils. And then towards the end of the video, I'll put those tips to the test by actually coloring something start to finish with just colored pencils. So I can show you guys how I put these techniques into play. So now that we're done talking, let's get to it. Okay, so what we got over here is a square filled with graphite and then a square filled with uh, some pink colored pencil right over here. So some of your main differences is that graphite is actually made from rock and graphite is actually a kind of rock. So the lead in whatever pencil you're using is based off of actual rock and it's made from that. Wax based colored pencils are kind of formula based and they're kind of mixed together with some pigments or whatever to get that color in. So that's some of your differences but the main difference is graphite can be erased. So I'm just take my eraser here and I'm just going to go over some with a little bit of graphite. As you can see, some of it is coming off the page, like so. So if I go over here to the waxed one, um, um, as you can see, some of it is coming off, but it may be a little bit difficult to erase, though. But the only reason you see me um, taking some of this off is because I didn't apply a lot of pressure to it. But if there are a lot of layers built on top of this, then it would definitely be hard to erase. Also, anything graphite or charcoal usually focuses on just values. If you don't know what value is, it's basically um, whatever you're doing but in black and white. Graphite is basically gray but it's not necessarily to the white. Whereas since wax colored pencils are pretty much made from pigments, you can have any color under the sun basically. So those are your two main differences between graphite and wax. But if you are interested in colored pencils, there are oil based colored pencils that are out there. But from what I've heard over the internet, compared to wax based colored pencils, oil based pencils are easy to layer but not easy to blend. 
So now that that's covered, let's move on to the next part of the video. Okay, so next I'm gonna show you how to actually put the pencil to the paper and do it properly. I know most of us as kids, when we used to color in coloring books with colored pencils, we used to always go in a direction that looks something like this. And that doesn't look very appealing, especially to professional artists. So what you wanna do is you wanna go in different directions to kinda get a flat tone like we did up here. So as you can see, that's kind of flat and everything. It doesn't have a certain direction of where I colored, so it's kind of hard to tell. And that's what we want. We want it to be kind of flat just like that. So instead of stroking the pencil in just one direction, like scribbling, like just like that, a way to accommodate for that is, let me try doing this again over here. It's but you know, before we start, let's just say when we're doing this, Keep the same pressure because when you're scribbling in something like this, you don't want one part of it to be too saturated from it because then it's going to look like you're trying to blend it or whatever. So just keep that in mind when you're trying to get an even flat color on it. So what we're going to do now, I'm going to go in another direction. Uh, let me hold it off to the side like this. Also keeping the same pressure. And as you can see, it's getting more and more flat. So um, we could leave it like this, or if you want to, you can go over in another direction. But by doing this, you're adding pretty much another layer onto it, which um, you're not really building a lot of pressure on it. You're just adding another layer to it, which means uh, you're getting rid of most of the white spots that we had over here. There's a lot of white spots there. So if you're adding more and more layers on top of it, you're kind of saturating the color a little bit more and you're also getting rid of some of the white spots that a color pencil would give on like white paper as you can see here. So yeah, it's always best to go in a different direction like so. So what you can also do is definitely an option. You can go in like a circular motion, but when you're doing this, just start out with the lightest pressure possible. So like you see here, you can barely see some of the red showing. And see, I'm slowly getting that saturated red color in. And I'm just pressing a little bit harder, but not too hard. And see, just going in circular motion. So basically what we're doing is, we're just adding like a million circles going in the same direction, basically kind of looping it. But we're just doing it as a colored pencil stroke. And that kind of looks good compared to this one it just goes in one direction but again just either go in a circular motion or do this multiple times in different directions so you definitely have options for getting a flat color out of coloring with your colored pencils so you definitely do want to take your time doing it as well because it does take some patience to color with your colored pencils so right here I'm gonna show you how to build up on some layers so what you see me doing in this first area is blotting in some flat color in which you can barely see. And that just means we didn't apply a lot of pressure here. So let's just say this section, or at least going towards this way, let's say this is a value scale or whatever, but we're gonna refer to it as like pressure. So this blue here, as you can see, this is like a very saturated blue. Let's just say the color that's in this square right now is like a light variation of this blue. So as I move forward towards this square, the saturation of this blue will kind of get more saturated and I'll put more pressure on the pencil when I'm coloring inside of these squares. So like I said earlier, it kind of works like a value scale, but instead we're gonna to refer to it as like the pressure that I built up going forward. So as you can see over here, I didn't apply a lot of pressure on this side, but over here I applied like a lot of pressure to it. So as you can see, there's a lot of white spots over in this square, which makes this initial blue look as if there was a tint to it. I guess you can look at it as a value scale in a way, but when you apply like a lot of pressure to the pencil, you're kind of getting rid of a lot of the white spots. Like on this blue that's over here, since I apply a lot of pressure to it and a lot of layers are right underneath it, it got rid of most of the white spots that were in this square here. So it's like this square times five basically to get here. So yeah, when I show you guys how to blend, I'm gonna mention a little bit something about layering, but when I do, you'll get an understanding of what I'm talking about. But while we're blending, we're still gonna uh, build up on layers and try to get rid of most of the white spots here without adding a solvent. But for now, let's move on. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how I blend, but for this one, I'm gonna show you how to blend with just one color 
but always build, but building up on pressure as well. So we're gonna be doing what we just did with the blue color pencil, but instead we're gonna actually blend it all in together. So what I'm doing now is I'm gonna add that entire green layer. I'm gonna add basically a base layer to this rectangle by just coloring it in and going with our even strokes. So to make sure we get a, a flat even color so that way our colored pencil strokes don't all go in one direction. Okay, so now that I got my base layer in, I'm gonna make the shades come from here. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have, I'm gonna build up a lot of pressure over here. And that'll give me a basis for blending back into this uh, base tone. So as I come off of this line, I'm going to lighten the pressure a little bit and I'm going to try to extend this shading towards over here. So basically what I'm doing is I'm building up a layer on top of here so that way in this general area I, all I got to do is blend. Okay, so now you can see a clear representation of all those layers being blended together. And when you look over here, I applied enough layers on it so that um, there are some white spots uh, visible, but not a whole lot towards uh, a whole lot of white spots being visible. So it makes it look like that there is a tint going on over here of this actual green. And then over here, it just looks like a clear representation of the green. So I basically blended that into the actual green. So that's another way of looking at it, but I wouldn't recommend it because when I usually shade things, I usually go for like the darkest variation of the actual color. But like I did here is the actual color, so it's not really much of a shade going on. But what could have happened was you could have put a lighter variation of this color as the base color and then just did this technique with this green, basically. But, but instead of a shade going on, you're really getting more saturation in the place of a shade, which is okay, but still wouldn't recommend it. All right, so now I'm gonna show you how to blend, but with several colors. So I'm gonna be using purples. I'm gonna be using like a lilac, like a secondary color, uh, a dark color, and then an even darker color. And since this color has like a very dark value, we're gonna try to use the black to get it like a very, very dark shade. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna lay down my first color, which is my base color. And again, doing what we did up here with the strokes and everything, you can either go in a circular motion or scribble in different directions, building up on layers to kind of get that saturation in. So you can do it either way. Okay, so now that we got that purple color in, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna grab my uh, my mid-tone, my second darkest color. Uh, since this is kind of a shade, I'm gonna kind of extend it out to be like right around here. So that way we have room for the shades and the darker shades and a possibility of adding a black. And remember to kind of smoothen that out. Remember I scribbled so I can either go in a different direction or um, you can add sort of a circular motion on top to kind of even out those uh, colored pencil strokes. And like I said earlier, we're going to try to build up on layers. So try not to worry too much about the white spots that are there. Those will eventually go away. Either that or um, some of them will still show, but not a whole lot of them. Like see, um, I'm blending our original tone back into the mid-tone that we just applied and as you can see there's like another layer going on here so i can blend that back into our base color here just like so just color over top of it therefore building another layer that way there's two layers over here three layers here and three layers right here i'm gonna go back with my mid-tone and kind of extend or make it a bit darker by adding more pressure. Provide like a gradient like we did with the green. Okay, and now that looks a bit darker and that kind of helps us out when it comes to adding more dark colors to it. So I'm gonna start by adding my darkest color. I'm gonna apply a little bit more pressure to it because we're working on top of like I'd say like three layers already that's over in this area. So you gotta push hard. And by doing that, you're still kind of getting rid of the white spots as well. So that's kind of like another point to get rid of those. 
as you can see, you're kind of seeing a gradient going on here. So here's our light, here's our midtone, here's our dark. So I'm gonna grab the midtone again. I'm gonna try to blend it back into our dark tone that we just applied. And now, you can go back with our lightest tone. Add another layer on top of it while also blending it with our mid-tone. And as you can see, these purples are kind of close to the same value, which is, I guess, okay, So, because um, you can still see kind of some shades going on here. You might want to go a little bit darker in case you see this on like a value scale. So what I am going to do is, since I'm working with like a, another dark color on top of a lot of different layers, we're going to try to apply a lot of pressure with this dark color. And then once we finish that one up, we can go back with our our first darkest color, our mid-tone, and our base color to try to um, basically fix up all that stuff that, the, that this color will kind of produce. Okay, so that is pr looking pretty good. Lots of smooth transitions. A little bit muddy over here, but that's okay. We can fix that in a minute. But what I'm doing here is I'm adding a black to it just around the smallest parts so we don't have to blend the black too much. So again, since I'm working on like a whole lot of layers that are already on here, um, I wasn't keeping count honestly, so I'd say like I'm working on top of five layers since this is the darkest and we started with the lightest and went that way. Let's just say we're working on top of five layers. So the black will kind of be layer number six-ish. So yes. So when you're working on top of like at least four or five or so layers, then you gotta at least press hard to get that color in. So if you press like a little less, then you will get like a like a lighter variation of that color on top of whatever you're coloring. Like say if I were to use this color, this darkest color, on top of here, it'll definitely show because it's a dark color on top of a light color. But if I were to do it right now, it'd be on top of three or so layers. And if that were the case, I would have to press hard so you can see it, you know. So now I'm gonna go back into the black, go in and out with the black to kind of mix it in with this purple. So as you can see, there is a mix going on here. And this part of the rectangle looks like it was made with pastels because it's like a very, very flat color. And that's because we applied a lot of layers to this portion. And what we can do is we can, we can do that to the entire piece. All right, so that's looking like an even smoother blend. And it looks even flat now. It's just a little bit on this area, but other than that, it looks fine. And all we did was like build up on layers and layers and layers, and eventually got rid of all, of, not all of them. Like I said, they some of them will still be showing the white spots that you'd get if you're coloring with colored pencils. But like I mentioned earlier, when you're blending, you're also building up layers because you'll need to go back and forth or whatever to kind of blend those colors together. And by doing that over and over, you eventually get rid of um, a majority of the white spot, which will benefit you if you plan on doing a colored pencil illustration. And since we're talking about illustrations, what I like to do for pretty much any illustration is add highlights to it but then again I don't do color pencil illustrations like so I figured I'd show you guys how to add highlights to your color pencil illustrations and you can do it in two ways what I like to use it's super small is like a prismacolor white colored pencil and since this is a dark color we can just maybe go on top of it like this but then again there are a lot of layers for us to work on top of so it may not be easy but you can still see something going on here as long as you apply that on and on. You can't necessarily get to white, but you can get to like a lighter variation of this specific color. Not this color, but to, but a lighter variation of this color. Cause all we did was blend the colors together. But anyway, another way to add highlights to colored pencil illustration is by using a wet media, like a jelly roll pen. So you can go on top like so. 
And in my opinion, it looks more white than the white colored pencil. So I would recommend using a gel pen. If you want to go for like a lighter variation of that specific color, then I would recommend going for the white colored pencil. Okay, so now we're on to drawing the human eye. I left this space blank and I'm gonna add the pupil later. For now, I'm just gonna use some yellow green. Seeing like a yellow chartreuse being like the lightest yellow and like a moss green being like the darkest shade that we're gonna use. And I'm gonna keep the black colored pencil on the table just in case we may use it because this dark color looks like it can mix with black some cases you may have a dark color that looks like this mid-tone here so you may not need a black but just keep that in mind if you have the tendency to use a black colored pencil when you're doing shading like this okay so the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna use my base color I'm gonna color in this entire area and since it's kind of hard to see you may not have to focus on the direction but I'm gonna do it anyway but um, you can also go in a circular motion all right, and now I'm going to go with my mid-tone, and some of the shadows will be up here, most of them. But the mid-tone I'm going to apply to, like, this entire outer part of the iris here. And then a lot of it will be applied to, like, underneath here. Okay, and now I'm going to go for the outer regions of it. And I'm gonna apply a little bit more pressure and applying a lot of pressure to like the dark tone is good So that way you have a way to work back from the light tone to the dark tone It's kind of forcing you to find a way to blend those together because you don't want just like a solid dark color over top Just like a light color basically taking this and just drawing a line uh, to indicate um, some shading You want to be able to find a way to blend those together That's um, if you're doing it that way it kind of forces you to do so which is good, but not always a good idea if you're uh, just drawing a line just like that. But applying pressure to it and doing it the way I'm doing, then that's okay. And then I'm going to keep applying more pressure to it. Because um, just to elaborate on what I said earlier, because um, the more layers that you build up when you're trying to shade the colored pencils, the more likely you are to add more pressure to it, giving it more of a color to it. As if you were to add just marker to this piece, which we did, because we're not using markers today. Um, just gonna go back and blend some of this back in. And then however my camera picks this up, it is kind of a smooth blend. And it's more of a smooth blend towards the middle, but then that leaves us with like the, the shades that are on the outer parts of this iris left to get in line. So we got our darkest tone left that we haven't used yet. And I'm just going to apply a lot of pressure to it because since we're already built up on layers, if we apply, if we apply a, a little pressure to the darkest pencil, it's not going to be as visible as we did with the, um, with the mid tone and base tone. So that's why we got to push harder. So we can be able to see it and if we want it to get really dark we got to put a lot of pressure on it as you can see so i'm going to apply a lot of pressure to it while still going in sort of a circular motion I'll apply lots of shades up here that's where the eyelid is kind of covering parts of it so i like to add more shades up here And then since we did push hard on it, there's going to be some like um, some clean lines up here caused by the uh, darkest tone, which is all right. But we can also we can always go back with our uh, first darkest tone and blend it back in. And again, applying more pressure to it because we added another layer of colored pencil already. And we're kind of covering up those white spots in the process, which is good because we're kind of feeling because when you see a colored pencil illustration, you're going to see white spots. But um, when you really, when you actually look at them, you just want to get rid of them completely. If that's your goal, then that's all right. But a color pencil illustration is going to have white spots anyway. So just be mindful of that. And then that leads us with something that looks kind of like a core. And that's what the base tone is. 
fill that area. I like to do it fast by just scribbling first and then just going back in uh, with the circular motion to kind of blend everything together again. Okay, and then sometimes I just want to go back with the black. darkest parts or at least like the outer regions like this the darkest parts will be up here as well and try to blend that out with the uh, darkest tuck color Okay, so that's a good colored pencil illustration from start to finish. It may some parts of it may look a little bit muddy, but I guess that's colors because of the color and the fact that I did go in different directions when I kept trying to build up on layers and everything. So that's the only reason it would look a little bit muddy. But yeah, just keep going back and forth with your color pencils to kind of blend and to elaborate as you build up on layers You're gonna need to add more pressure to the pencil even if you're just blending on top of everything which is in some cases not easy, but still manageable. Okay, then on top, I'm just gonna add a pupil towards the middle, and then just a dab of white for a highlight. It's not gouache, it's just regular acrylic paint. But anyway, that's my video on using colored pencils and how to blend with them from start to finish. So if you did like my video, give it a like and a comment, subscribe if you haven't, and tap the notification bell so you never miss an upload. And I'll see you in my next video. I pack my nigga like Patty Kate.